So I've been messing around with uh, Godot a little bit. Um, I've done it before because um, I'm always, I've always been interested in making uh, games and stuff. However, uh, this time I had a bit of a different mission. I wanted to make something that can help me produce uh, videos because a lot of time is spent uh, on the editing table having to put in uh, all kinds of graphics and take out all kinds of things. And also a lot of time is spent uh, where I have to actually write code to uh, present. And then I have to write it again as a sort of a performance for on the video. And I figured uh, instead of just seeing me mess up all the time, we may have as well kind of automate that process. And a game engine is a pretty good way of doing that. So I've set up this simple kind of environment. And if I hit the semicolon, uh, a sort of a terminal window opens up. And um, n normally I would, I would uh, sort of type something like um, present github.com the ape machine and then um, if we are talking about the programming language for instance uh, boogie uh, however that's not implemented yet I've just uh, I sent that exact same command by just typing the word test and when I do that uh, a couple of things are loaded in and as you can see the code starts writing itself and then a video starts playing right next to it and the, this video uh, while it's big bug bunny for now as a, as a I needed some demo content this can be anything so an explanation about the code that you're seeing on the left is uh, more likely now the code is finished writing and the video is about to finish uh, playing so it will go to the next file and then start writing out that with its proper explanation and so as you can see this can really help me kind of create a more real-time and automated process of uh, producing videos and there's a couple of really cool things going on uh, over here. So if we look at it, uh, we have our main scene over here. Uh, it has a camera, a directional light, a floor, uh, some sound, and a world environment. Nothing very special uh, going on over here. Um, when we look at the script for that, though, uh, and if we can uh, extend it a little bit, <coughs> sorry, uh, we, we have a couple of um, uh, signals here that are being connected. If you know Godot, then you might as well know that um, there is this sort of pop sub message queue with a, a, a signaling system. So I have an, a couple of signals. And basically what it does is um, there is this script, uh, which I can show you if I go to um, here, uh, right there, yeah. So if we open uh, this script here, and let me uh, make that a little bit bigger. Uh, the font might be a little small here, but just make your screen bigger. It has these commands in here, uh, add buffer, cat, and then uh, a location to file. Grab focus, next, play buffer. And that just sort of goes on and on. And uh, how that works is basically um, when we write in the terminal uh, test, you can see that over here in this script, it uh, emits a signal to add a new sequencer for this directory. Um, and the directory is actually just a sort of a file system directory inside the Godot project. So this is the Godot project. Uh, you can see the project here. And then here there's a directory called file system. It has a, a, a copy of my GitHub uh, file system in there. And so it emits this signal uh, to um, uh, add a sequencer and if it doesn't recognize the command it will actually hand off the signaling to OS but I will show you that later so the sequencer um, when we look at the 3d view for that um, let me make this smaller is uh, here in the bin file uh, it's just a scene empty scene nothing more but it has a script on it and that script also has a lot of signals that uh, are basically a copy of the uh, previ previous uh, ones in main and what this does is it opens um, that script right here and then um, when it gets the focus it goes over each line in the script so it splits it by new line and then uh, gets every action from the script by um, uh, splitting it on on space and so now it's an array and so now I can emit signals based on that script back to main and so now I have a scriptable game engine, basically, that I can... Uh, I have a high-level scripting language on top of my game engine, basically. And that way I can make these, like, little sequences. I can write out my script for 
um, making a video and it will basically orchestrate that all inside the game engine which I don't, then just have to screen record. So um, for instance when it does play buffer you have this buffer thing here and what that does is uh, a couple of other things. So uh, let's go back to this and let's look at the buffer scene. The scene, this is getting uh, um, to the meat of it because I wanted to have uh, everything in 3D since now I basically are am creating text editors and document viewers I figured I might as well want to do that in 3D instead of just using a normal UI system that is in 2D uh, because then why use a 3D game engine at all so the buffer um, is basically like this um, this little scene that has a, a, a quad mesh and the quad mesh it has a uh, material and that material is um, when you look at uh, albedo is actually a viewport it's this viewport right here so this viewport is uh, completely empty at the moment uh, but what it can do if we look at the buffer code is it can load a ui element here it loads a ui scene and then adds it as a child to that viewport so now anything that is basically loaded into this viewport is rendered on this mesh and that is very cool because that means that we can have any kind of UI element basically just projected onto that mesh. So here, when we looked at the terminal, for instance, that is nothing more here than a, um, a normal uh, control element with uh, a text edit on it. Um, similarly with uh, the video player, it's just a video player. You can make any kind of UI element here like the normal way the only thing that you do need to do uh, for sure is to make sure that you are anchored one to one uh, on the lowest two uh, and make sure that your rect size is exactly the same size as your viewport um, because uh, what happens a lot of times is that the margins by default here are set to 40 right and bottom so that's very important also on that viewport texture you do have to set a couple of um, filters to make it look good now I can never remember where those filters are but uh, they might actually be on a mesh instance to be honest uh, so we have the material hmm there is always some filtering that we need to do otherwise it will look very very bad uh, and it doesn't look great uh, in the first place the, the, the font still needs to be uh, rendered a bit better but um, that's for, uh, I still need to figure out how to do that. This is weird, there, there needs to be some sort of a filter somewhere. Let's see if we can find that because it's, it, it was quite important. Let me see if there was anything interesting about this. Oh yeah, the custom font is quite important. So make a custom font and make sure that you scale it up quite big otherwise your font will uh, be very small and also uh, not that legible and also here actually you, you probably uh, do well to put these on and make sure that anti-alias is on however um, I still haven't found where this um, very specific filtering was happening because uh, it was really sort of the key to make the fonts at least somewhat legible otherwise they look really horrible but um so maybe it is on the mesh instance then material cast shadow lod it's not that well i suppose i cannot find it but given that it was really really quite important oh the other thing that is very important is to make sure that on your uh, mesh instances material the one that you use the viewport uh, texture transparent needs to be on uh, unshaded or shaded make sure that if you have it on uh, not on unshaded if you don't have it like this you need to project some light onto that surface otherwise um, you won't see anything and also um, turn this one on I don't know what that does converts to some color space I believe but um, 
this was not it. I did mess with this when I was trying to get everything to render a bit better. These are the ones. Okay, so here in Albedo, um, for your uh, material, spatial material, uh, make sure that you have uh, mip maps, filter, all this on. Otherwise, it just won't look that great uh, font-wise. So this is something that I need to uh, put a little bit of time in just to make um, video uh, creation just a bit easier because this will help me um, not have to write all my code twice and also I will be able to for the video explanations spend a little more, bit more time on trying to uh, be more clear in my explanations so that um, that is hopefully then an improvement because writing code and explaining it at the same time it obviously doesn't work that well so yeah um, I will be releasing another video soon hopefully through the first version of this uh, this software